Let go. Peace and power, man. We just keeping it groovy. We be keeping it wavy by any means possible, man. Drop power, man. Drop power to all y'all, man. Peace and power, man. Let go. You still are, you know what I'm saying, at, at such a beginning phase of, you know, catching this uh, pure water that we're catching, man. So we all got to keep emptying our cups. We all got to keep our hands open to Hawaii so we can keep surfing the wave, man. Stay on the boogie board. Do your thing, man. Love to everyone dropping the drop, surfing the wave, leaving your comments. I truly appreciate every minute you put into vibrating with me, vibrating with the home team, man. You see we getting cozy, man. You see we getting cozy, man. Drive Nation, man. I told you we about to get cozy, man. Drop Nation in full effect, man. That's how we rock it, man. These are only 35, man, so we about to drop these. I haven't even put the link up yet, man, but if you, you know what I'm saying, want to cop one in a hurry, man, leave, you know, leave a comment or something, man. I'll drop you a link, man. We're about to come with the hats, man, pretty soon. Going to get the logo right on there. I'm just trying to get cozy with it first, man, make sure it's all cope aesthetic, man. But peace and power, man. Keep supporting the J. Stu Baby Fund. We're just being creative, you know what I mean, with how we put our ingredients together right now, man, you know what I'm saying, as we, you know, make our exodus out of this hijack frequency, you know what I'm saying, it starts right here. You got to mentally make an exodus. You got to mentally, you know what I'm saying, start to put those ingredients together to detach from as much hijack as possible. I know it's hard to be 100% static free, 100% hijack free, but damn it, let's try, all right? Let's just try something new. Let's just try being hijack free, man. Surfing the wave, man. Yeah, man, we back in the supper. We back in the supper, man. You know what I mean? Love the silence, the admire, man, for lacing my boots on this supper, man. It's been uh, just a beautiful journey. And uh, yeah, man, you know what I'm saying? So it's about to be a uh, tune-in season, man. You're going to tune directly in a 4 through 2 to drive. We're about to be coming directly with our radio, directly out of that. The home team, man, we're, we're, we're excited. We're talking about it. And you've been, you know, the most patient, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, family of all time, man. So thank y'all for y'all support. Everything you drop on PayPal goes directly into supporting, you know what I'm saying, our, our live 24-7 radio, you know, coming at you daily, you know what I mean, with the drop. So it's something brand new. If you like it, support it. We appreciate you. And we're just going to keep it flowing, man. You know what I'm saying? We, we enjoy getting the drop out. We enjoy getting the babies out. We enjoy falling back, you know what I'm saying, and just knowing that we got a foundation, knowing we got a we got our own unique perspective. We ain't gotta be that judgmental and all that. I can't be everything for everybody. You can't be everything for everybody. But you know, as long as we try, man, as long as we trying to be groovy, you know what I mean? You, you see a brother trying, I see you trying. So we support it, you know, each other. We support the wave, we support the effort, you know what I mean, that we're all putting in, man. So let's get into this Jubilees. We're gonna get into a little chapter from Jubilees and a chapter from Isaiah, and it goes, you know, right on the wave, we were surfing with the last couple of drops, you know what I'm saying, with the whole Moore series and, you know what I mean, all, all the stuff that adds up to who's claiming your lots, who's happy with their lot, who's, who, who's not happy with their lot, who's invading constantly, you know what I'm saying, what's order. So we're going to try to get a perspective of what order is, get the babies out, man. And again, we're reading in English, we're out of our minds, we're talking in a forked tongue. But we're doing our best, you know what I mean, to keep that net out, man, to keep catching the drop. So I'm actually going to get it from uh, Jubilee Chapter 9. We're in the Et Sephora. And, uh, yeah, you know, just, just you know, ride with me because we're going to get a little specific about whose lot is which, what, who has what lot and what, you know. And all these names might seem like, you know, they're all over the place, but you know, a lot of this stuff is right here in the Americas, and some of it's not. All right, so we're gonna start with Ham or Cham or Ham. <laughs> so Ham divided amongst his sons, and the first portion came forth for Cush towards the east. So Ham gave his first portion to Cush. Now, you remember the map that we showed, you know what I'm saying, with the Amexum. And the uh, you know Morocco Empire, all that. So you got Americas are all Africa, right? We're in Northwest Africa. So this is Ham over here, and then they got Kush over there. So it's just Ham and Kush. Now let's look at the whole actual perspective, not just their perspective. 
so we can see the board from a tribal viewpoint. And when one tribe or group of confederacy or confederacy of tribes claims it for themselves, then you have a, a board that looks like Ham and Kush only. But let's see what the whole perspective is, man. Again, thank y'all for digging on that drop. And Ham divided up amongst his sons, and the first portion came forth for Cush towards the east and to the west of him for Mitzrayim, for Egypt. All right, so the west is Egypt. And to the west of him for Put, and to the west of him, and to the west of him, and to the west thereof on the sea for Canaan or Cana. All right. And Shem also divided amongst his sons, and the first portion came forth for Eliam. And his sons and to the east and the river Chid Chidiquil, Chidiquil till it approaches the east the whole land of India and on the Red Sea on its coast and the waters of Dadan and all the mountains of Mebri and Aliam and all the land of Shushan and all that is on the side of Farnak to the Red Sea and the River Tina. <laughs> so all that is what Shem is dividing up. Uh, you heard all of India. So you might as well just say all of the Indias. Remember they found us in the Indias. Alright. And Shem also divided amongst his sons. The whole land of India. Alright. And for Asher came forth the second portion, and all the land of Asher and Nineveh, and Shinar into the border of India. And it ascends and skirts the river, and for Arkpakshad came forth the third portion, all the land of the region of Kasdim, Kasdim to the east, and of the Parath, bordering on the Red Sea, and all the rivers of the desert close to the tongue of the sea which looks towards Mitzrayim. All the land of Lebanon and Sinair and Amana to the border of Parath and for Aram there came forth the fourth portion all the land of Aram, Naharim between Jedekuel and Parath to the north of Kasadim to the border of the mountains of Asher and the land of Arad and, the, and there came forth for Lude, Lud, the fifth portion, the mountains of Asher, and all appertaining them till it reaches the great great sea, until it reaches the east of Asher, his brother. Now, already, you should be thinking tribal. These are tribes. When you keep hearing, oh, Native American tribes, you're hearing tribes, tribes, tribes. Now, what do you know? Tribes have lots. Tribes have land. All right. It's not North America, South America, Central America, Ham, Africa, Kush. <laughs> All right. These are specific boundaries that the Creator placed for the seeds, for the seeds. All right. They have lots. They're, they're indigenous. They have specific genes to those specific lots to thrive in order. Lots are specific. You grow up today, oh man, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just wherever I am, I am, man, you know. Nah, man, I don't know because you used to have a tree. You had a tree that would heal you. You had a tree that would feed you. So it's very important for you to know where you at and whose tree you eating off of. And if you're eating off of my tree, you better raise up. Tribe up and vibe up, man. <laughs> All right. All right, so it goes on talking about the different lots, man. Now, I want to get to uh, chapter 10. And in the third week of this jubilee, the unclean devils, uh-oh. Well, here we go. The unclean devils began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make air, air, and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the devils which were leading astray and binding and slaying 
the, his son's sons. And he prayed before Hawa and said, Elohim Hawa, the Ruachat of all flesh, who has shown mercy unto me and has saved me and my sons from the waters of the flood, has not caused me to perish as you did the sons of perdition. For your grace has been great towards me, and great has been your mercy to my soul. Let your grace be lift up upon my sons, and let not wicked Ruachat spirits rule over them, lest they shall destroy them from the earth. Are you being destroyed from the earth? And you know how your watchers, the fathers of these Ruach, these Ruachat, these spirits, acted in my day as these, as for these Ruachat, which are living, imprison them. All right, so for these devilish spirits that are living, imprison them. What's coming? What's the judgment for the hijack? <laughs> they better hope to be in prison, right? Prison would be, uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, a, a sweet hell for them, you know what I'm saying? For the, for the terror they've caused, for the mutilation, for the violation. They better hope that it has to do with prison. Because the Most High is very creative about this destruction. I mean, wasn't wasn't your destruction very creative? Was it just about prison for you? No, that's just a part of it, right? Bars and prisons are just a part of our life as so-called Negroes. But the prison is, 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 is in our mind. It's all over the place, man. It's around us. That's what we're breaking free from. But do you bless me? and my sons that we may increase and multiply and replenish the earth and you know how your watchers the fathers of these ruachat acted in my day and as for these ruachat which are living imprison them and hold them fast in the place of condemnation and let them not bring destruction on the sons of your servant my elohim for these are are malignant and created in order to destroy they're created for destruction and let them not rule over the Ruachat of the living, for you alone can exercise dominion over them. And let them not have power over the sons of the righteous from henceforth and forevermore. And Hawa bade us to bind all. And the chief of the Ruachat, Mastima, they call, their Lucifer, they call Mastima, okay, came and said, Hawa, creator, let some of them remain before me. You gotta, you know, step on this foundation right quick. He didn't go to the Creator and say, I'm sorry, I repent. You know what I mean? Forgive me. Nah. Mastima didn't do that. Lucifer didn't do that. Remember, he's walking to and fro. In Job, right? In Job, you know, Lucifer, what you doing? Say, what you doing, man? I'm just walking around the earth, man, jamming people up. What's up with y'all? He has a job to do. He is the goon of your father's house. He's not against you, not when you're in order, not when you're in line, but when you're crooked. He's the one that comes with all the hijacked frequency and completely humbles you out and destroys you into until either you're destroyed or the chaos is destroyed. So we got nothing to fear, but none of this spooky devil or Satan or this. This is how he's talking to the creator. And the chief of the Ruachat, Mastima, came and said, Hawa, creator, let some of them, he's talking about the, the uh, other, other energies that, that they created for chaos, let some of them remain before me and let them hearken to my voice and do all that I shall say unto them. For if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. For these are for corruption and leading astray before my judgment. For great is the wickedness of the sons of men. And he said, let the tenth part of them remain before me, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. So he himself condemned nine out of ten of these fallen ones, and kept a tenth of them, and told Hawa, man, let me hold them so I can do your work. 
let me hold them so I can ju judge and jam people up. So I can exercise dominion over them. He has dominion over you when you're in chaos, not when you're in order. You're free when you free yourself. This is the goon. This is the goon of your daddy's house that keeps, you know what I'm saying, all the all the hijack energy checks it all. He's the master of all that shit. So once you start playing his hijack game, he whoops your ass. Once you once you're in line with with Hawa, he got no power over you. You're free to go. You're free. He got no power over you. You keep playing. You keep playing the hijack game. That's your ass, man. So he kept a tent, and Hawa said, "Yeah, man. What did he say?" So he said, let me keep a tenth, a tenth of them, for if some of them are not left to me, I shall not be able to execute the power of my will on the sons of men. So this is an arrangement. He works for your dad. This Lucifer Satan works for your dad. Okay? <laughs> it's all, look, the most high, they have to ask the most high. Zeus, whatever they call the Zeus and all the Mars and all that, they still have to rock with the ultimate frequency. They still have to connect. They still work for that which is above the barrier. So none of it has any order over you when you're hijack free. They still have to get order. They still have to be allowed, just like they say, with permission of the Pharaoh, they can go places. Well, with permission of Hawa, they can rock for a limited amount of time. So he said, hearken to my voice. If you, if you do not leave a portion of it to me, I will not be able to exit, execute. What did he say? Let the tenth part of them remain before me, and let nine parts descend into the place of condemnation. And one of us, he commanded, that we should teach Noah all their medicines. For he knew that they would not walk in uprightness, nor strive in righteousness. So then the Most High instructed, one of us, he commanded, that we shall teach Noah all the medicines. So one of the angels was instructed by the Creator to start teaching special medicine to Noah because he knew that we would be poisoned. He knew that we would be sickened. Listen up. And one of us, he commanded that we should teach Noah all their medicines for he knew that they would not walk in uprightness. So if you don't walk in uprightness, that means you're out of order, which means what happens to your body? How come you only live into 70 and stuff now and you used to live hundreds of years? What happens? Because you're not righteous. You're out of order. Your body's out of order because you're out of order. So now you have disease, dis-ease. You're in dis-ease. You're in a state of dis-ease because you are in dis-ease. You're a disease. You have abominations, you're eating abominations, you're thinking abominations, you have dis-ease frequency. You're in 440 hertz, you have dis-ease. You don't have your mountains or your trees, you have dis-ease. So they commanded, no, he commanded the angel to teach Noah their medicines, for he knew they would not walk in uprightness, nor strive in righteousness. And we did, according to all his words, all the malignant evil ones we bound in the place of condemnation and the tenth part of them we left that they might be subject before Satan on the earth. So Mastema is Satan. That's his name. And he was allowed to keep a tenth of the angels in order to do what? For you alone can exercise dominion over them to execute the power of my will, the power of Satan's will, Mastema's will. 
So he has willpower too. Now who's giving him willpower? The creator is letting him rock. <coughs> All right. The creator is giving him willpower. <laughs> He's giving him the power over his own will. He's giving him a tenth of the angels to have power, to have willpower over you when you're out of order to test and to prove to form you into a diamond to form you into pure gold to form you into the purified drop the substance and we explain to Noah all the medicines of their diseases so where's that book man come on man where's that book man where's Noah's book of all the medicines and all you know where's that book we know there's a book right because clearly and we explain to Noah all their medicines of their disease together with their seductions and how he might heal he might heal them with herbs of the earth that he might heal them with herbs of the earth so now he has his herbs sorry man my little my little Jacob man making it happen man all right man we about to go man you know, we got no patience man he's jamming me up Nah, man, so we know we got an herb healing book, and we know it's we got to be legit, all right? We're talking herbs of the earth. We're talking about being healed with the herbs of the earth. So Noah is a book of herbal remedies, you know, hijack free. Some tells me something like this might pop up so we can be healed from all the hijack. How he might heal them with the herbs of the earth, man. And Noah wrote down all things in a sefer, a book, and we instructed him concerning every kind of medicine. Thus the evil rule of Kot were, were precluded from hurting the sons of Noah. So they tried to disease him, but the book kept him hijack free. <laughs> so Noah wrote all things down in this book. Thus evil, they were, they were precluded or prevented from being hurt. So this is this is pre-active, you know what I'm saying? This is being proactive here. You don't just take these herbs when you get sick, you take them to prevent or preclude yourself from being hurt, which is a curse. You're being cursed, and now we're being hurt all the time, and we can't, we can't heal, we can't heal ourselves, man. So there's a way to heal ourselves. We know it has to do with the herbs of the earth. So let's go. And he gave all that he had written to Shem, his eldest son, for he loved him exceedingly above all his sons. And Noah slept with his fathers and was buried on Mount Luber in the, in the land of Ararat. 950 years he completed his life, 19 jubilees, and two weeks and five years. And in his life on the earth he excelled the children of men, save Enoch, because of his righteous, because of the righteousness wherein he was perfect. All right, so we talk about Noah being perfect and Enoch being perfect. For Enoch's office was ordained for a testimony to the generations of the world so that he should recount all the deeds of generation unto generation to the day of judgment. And in the 3 and 13th Jubilee, 3, 3 and 30th uh, Jubilee, in the first year, in the second week, Peleg took for himself a woman whose name was Lomna, to the daughter of Sinar. 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 So we're talking about Enoch, and then he has Peleg. Now, what do you remember? In the days of Peleg, where the earth divided, right? So this brings about an important point. Does Peleg actually match up with the actual Atlantis? I mean, these are good questions, you know what I mean? To where things are now being catastrophically divided up, and now we have in the days of Peleg, was the earth divided? And we're just talking Enoch. So, were things divided, you know, after Enoch? You know, were things divided in the days of Peleg? Is this the fall of Atlantis? You know, are they now in a situation of migrating from? you know, out of this catastrophe or, you know what I'm saying, out of this bondage that, this Atlantis bondage that was being, you know what I'm saying, precluded 
by these energies, by this Poseidon, by this Atlas that was already being hijacked. Egypt ain't nothing new that was already going down. This is the same war, the same celestial frequency war. So the Peleg, in the days of Peleg. So then Peleg took for himself a woman named Lomna, Lomna, the daughter of Sinar, and she bore him a son in the fourth year of this week, and he called his son Reu. For he said, Behold, the children of men have come, have become evil through the wicked purpose of building for themselves a city and a tower in the land of Sinar. All right. So now we got a tower reference. Let's just surf this. You know, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking questions. Is this the Tower of Babel? And if this is the Tower of Babel popping off in, around Peleg, and then the Tower of Babel was destroyed. Was the Tower of Babel destroyed at the same time Atlantis was destroyed? And is that why Peleg is mentioning the Tower of Babel? In the days of Peleg, was the earth divided? I don't know. It's the Tower, though. And I know that, you know, all these references like Devil's Tower, Wyoming, all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? We, in our cliche writings, it's always this tower, you know, you know, this, you know, the whole situation. So we got the tower already in our indigenous, in our indigenous drive. You know I mean, so we're connecting what they put into the so-called Old Testament or Tanakh, whatever you want to call it. They're all already your indigenous stories, and that's how we can really connect a lot of the foundation of the drive. So Peleg got himself a woman named Lomna. She has a, they have a child, Reu, because he says, he calls the child, Peleg calls his child Reu, because he says, behold, the children of men have become evil through the wicked purpose of building for themselves, for them, building for themselves a city and a tower in the land of Shinar. Land of Shinar or Sinar or the land of Sin. For they departed from the land of Ararat, Ararat eastward to Shinar. For in his days they built the city and the tower, saying, Go to let us ascend thereby unto into heaven. So we talk in Tower of Babel. And I'm saying in the days of Peleg, he's talking about the Tower of Babel. And when the Tower of Babel was destroyed, in the days of Peleg was the earth divided, was Atlantis split apart, was the earth divided. Now you have the migrations, you know, back to this land or that land from these other lands that are underwater. In the days of Peleg, Tower of Babel, let go. And they began to build, and in the fourth week they made brick and fire, and the brick served them for stone, and the clay with which they cemented them together was asphalt, which comes out of the sea, and out of the fountains of the water. Fountains of the water in the land of Shinar, and they built it forty and three years. Forty-three years they were building it. Its breadth was 203 bricks, and its height of a brick was the third of one. Its height amounted to 5,430 and three cubits and two palms, and the extent of one wall was 13 stades, and of the other 30 stades. And Hawa said unto us, Behold, they are one people, and this they and this they began to do, and now nothing will be withholding from them. Go to, let us down and confound their languages, that they may understand, may not understand one another's speech. And they may be dispersed into cities and nations, and one purpose will no longer abide them till the day of judgment. Then everything comes back together. Because what <laughs> did all the nations do? You know what I'm saying? When they had one speech, they tried to literally, you know what I'm saying, you know, be, you know, in, in the next octave, 
before it was time to. It's kind of like having a child, and it's not like, okay, no, driving is not evil, but I still wouldn't let my child drive my car. It's not that the car is evil, right? It's not the tower. It's not the thought of being with the creator. It's that they're not ready to drive a car, right, or a truck. I wouldn't put a three-year-old behind a truck, right? So it's timing, you know what I mean? It's not like, oh, the Most High didn't want everyone to be one. When you were one, what did you do with it? So when you become one again, what are you going to do with it? All right? First thing you're going to do is listen. You're going to listen to the sound. You're going to listen. You're going to be in order. You know what I mean? And you'll be free. You'll be free. You'll be free forever. You'll be free forever. You are free forever. We are one. All right? But, you know, don't abuse it. You can't abuse your power. And he confounded their language, and they no longer understood one another's speech, and they ceased then to build the city and the tower. For this reason, the whole land of Shinar is called Babel, because... Hawah did there confound all the language of the children of men from thence. They were dispersed into their cities, each according to his language and, and nation. <clears throat> and Hawah sent a mighty wind against the tower and overthrew it upon the earth. And behold, it was between Asher and Babel in the land of Shinar, and they called its name Overthrow. <laughs> in the fourth week, in the first year, in the beginning thereof, in the fourth and thirteenth jubilee, were they dispersed from the land of Shinar or Babel. And Ham and his sons went into the land which he was to occupy. So then he went, still, then Ham went into his land. After the, the Tower of Babel fell, then Ham went into his land. Listen. Which he was to occupy. Ham and his sons went into the land which he was to occupy. <laughs> All right. which he acquired as his portion in the land of, his south, of the south. That was his portion. That was his lot. All right? Not the whole North America, South America, Central America. That was his portion. He had a lot, a portion. Not over there. Listen up. So Ham and his sons went into the land which he was to occupy, which he acquired as his portion in the land of the south. And Canaan saw the land of Lebanon. So Canaan, all right, talking about the Canaanite. Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Mitzrayim, all the way to Egypt. And it was very good, and he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west, that is, to the sea. And he dwelt in the land of Lebanon eastward and westward from the border of Yarden or Jordan and from the border of the sea. So don't be confused by all of their, you know, I'm saying, geography. We know where Canaan went, and we know where he didn't want to leave. We know where the Canaanites were that Joshua had to slay. All right, and remember, they flipped you upside down, and east is west, and west is east. So don't get it confused. So, you know, Lebanon means a place of whiteness, right? You know, word to teach, man, word to, word to hire, man, breaking that down. So we're just talking about, you know, a place of whiteness, a pure place, a holy land we're talking about. And Egypt, obviously, as we know, is here in America. So... He saw this land. He saw Canaan saw the land of Lebanon to the river of Egypt, that it was very good. We're talking about America. And he went not into the land of his inheritance to the west, that is, to the sea. Flip the map. And he dwelt in the land of Lebanon eastward. Flip the map. And westward from the border of Yarden or Jordan and from the border of the sea. And Ham, his father, and Cush, and Mitzrayim, his brother, said unto him, Hold up. They had a sit down about this. You know how gangsters do. They have sit downs. Real OGs don't just get emotional and cause unnecessary bloodshed. We have sit downs. 
before the shit really has to go to a place, you know what I'm saying, that you can't come back from. That's just OG. That's the way to OG. OG don't talk about it. OG don't get on Instagram and social media and talk shit. OG, make a phone call or send a bird or a pigeon or something. <laughs> and you have a sit down. All right, a cold ass sit down. And you just talk it out. See, see what's good. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know what it is. So that's what they did. Ham, Kush, and Mitzraya. Alright, and Egypt. Egyptos. So they all pulled Cain in the side. Verse 30. I mean, uh, chapter 10, verse 30. And Ham, his father, and Cush, and Mitzrayim, his brothers, said unto him, Canaan, you have settled in a land which is not yours. So nobody was fucking with, nobody was rocking with this. Nobody was supporting this movement. It was a violation. It was a pure violation to the creator. Because even Satan, even Mastima, has to ask for a portion of his homies to rock with. And so do they. So do they. So they knew he came, Canaan and the Canaanite and all that came over here, and they knew it wasn't their turf. And Ham, his brother Mitzram, Cush even had to sit down with him and said, come on, bro. Now, if Ham, his land is here, like the Morocco map we just showed, you know, Africa is, you know, uh, North America is northwest of Mexico, Africa, and southwest of Mexico is South America on that map. And then it has Ham over North America, Ham over South America, Cush on the other side. If that's true, then Ham would not be telling Canaan, you, you in the wrong turf. Ham would be saying, hey, welcome to America. It's mine. Come on, Canaan. Nah, but what did he say? What did they say? Cush, Mitzrayim. You have settled in a land which is not yours, Canaan. You in violation, man. Let's have a sit down about this. You have settled in a land that is not yours and which did not fall to us by lot. Body bag, man. Body bag, dang. Now, we got them trying to claim America for Ham, for Canaan. They upset with Joshua for clearing them out. Telling them that this is our promised land, this is our soil, this is our indigenous, off top time soil, but this is where we're from. This is our lot. This is the lot of Shem. This is the lot of Israel. How about Israel? We over here doing this play play, acting like we ain't a tribe, like we just black. Old black people, black power. Nah, man. Drop power. Drop power. We got the power to purify substance with us. We got the power to drop with us. So you want to claim America? But you knew it wasn't yours. You had to sit down about this, right? And Ham, his father, Cush, Mitzrayim, his brother, said unto Canaan, You have settled in a land which is not yours and which did not fall to us by lot. Do not do so. For if you do so, you and your sons will fall in the land and be accursed through sedition. For by sedition you have settled, and by sedition will your children fall and you shall be rooted out forever. And what happened? They fell to who? You, Negro, the Aztec, the Ute Aztec, Joshua. Then they came back with reinforcement. They came back to Hawiku. They came to the promised land with treaties and reinforcement. And they wake up today and they say, you're black. You're more, you're great, you're more. What perspective is more perspective? My perspective is Hawa. You can't hijack that. Because we have lots here. If you ain't talking tribal, you ain't talking lots, then you're on that play play. Because we have tribes and we have lots and you on sacred ground. That's fact. You on sacred ground. Now, if you ain't from here and you don't belong here, you better start choosing up. If you're going to stay here, you better start really helping the people who's from here. Because the land is about to choose up with the people. Hawaii.
you you have settled in a land which is not yours and which did not fall to us by lot do not do so for if you do so you and your sons will fall in the land and be cursed through sedition for by sedition you have settled and by sedition will your children fall and you shall be rooted out forever dwell not in the dwelling of Shem America dwell not dwell not dwell not in the dwelling of Shem for to Shem and to his sons did it come by their lot get out of America because to the Americans did America fall or be given to by lot it came to us by lot it's our lot you can't change that by invading you can't change it by war cursed are you cursed are you cursed shall you be beyond all the sons of Noah Canaan shall be cursed beyond every single one of Noah's sons for violating Shem's land which is the reason why Joshua had to go slice and dice Canaanites and their giant seed Cursed are you, and cursed shall you be beyond all the sons of Noah by the curse by which we bound ourselves by an oath in the presence of the Holy Judge, Hawa. And in the presence of Noah, our father, but he did not hearken unto them and dwelt in the land of Lebanon from Hamath to the entering of Mitzrayim, America, and he and his sons until this day, America. And for this reason, that land is named Canaan, America. And Japheth, Japheth and his sons went towards the sea and dwelt in the land of their portion. And Madai saw the land of the sea, and it did not please him. They were not pleased with what Hawa gave them, so they wanted more. They extended their perspective to their own unique more perspective. Does that make it reality, or is it just an illusion? Madai saw the land of the sea and it did not please him. We're talking about the Greeks, right? The Romans and the Greeks. It did not please them. And he begged a portion from Eliam and Ashur and Africa. So he started begging his bros, can I get some of your? Can I get can I get some of your? I just got a little bit. Can I get more? Can I get can I get more? <laughs> and he called his dwelling place. And the dwelling place of his sons, Madai, after the name of their father, Madai. So we're talking about lots. Remember, you have settled in a land which is not yours and which did not fall to us by lot. Do not do so, Canaan, Moab, Esau, Ammon. You know, do not do so. For if you do so, you and your sons will fall in this land that you... <laughs> will fall in this land and be cursed through sedition for by sedition you have settled and by sedition your children fall and you shall be rooted out forever so dig on that man that's uh, Jubilees 10 9 and 10 you know and I'll leave it with this man we'll get back in that ah, good old Isaiah or Yeshayahu Hawahu, a goat. Go Isaiah 35, man, make our dismount. Hawahu, I just want to touch base, man, and just let y'all know, man, this is so much a hop coming in and out. And, you know, I, I give this, you know what I'm saying? I, I take a break. I tell little ones, man, sit down, man. We gon', you know, we gonna do that. But let me first come to the people, man. Let let us first tribe up, you know what I mean? Because it has to be community first, man. It's how we have to build. We have to keep putting this time out, taking this hour, a couple hours out of our day. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you're doing, if you drop and drop, if you read and drop, if you're meditating, if you're calling your brother up, if you're helping your brother, you're helping your sister. 
do it, man. Take your time out and do it. Let's go, man. Isaiah 35. I love y'all. Let's go. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them. The wilderness. It's not your wilderness. It's not your wilderness. It's not wild to you. It's home. It's not a wilderness to you. It's home. Trees, baby. So the trees, right? The wilderness, the trees, and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Isaiah 35, man. The desert, the, the desert shall be glad, shall rejoice. Has the desert rejoice, man? Have you returned to your desert and felt the land rejoicing because it's about to turn into a beautiful oasis again. The water's gonna flow. Your trees are gonna grow. You thought this captivity was forever and it's not. You thought this isn't reality and it's not. You're stepping into reality, man. We're stepping above the barrier, man. That's all we're doing, man. When you rock this, when you support us, man. Man, you rock that drop. You know what I'm saying? Somebody might see you walk by and say, hashtag drop nation. They might put in hashtag drop nation, be led to the drop, change their life, man. So, you know what I'm saying? You are rocking it to support us, but you're also, you know what I'm saying, spreading the frequency, and we appreciate that more than ever, man. Let's go. The wilderness, the trees, and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as the rose it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing the glory of lebanon america shall be given unto it the excellency of carmel and sheriff and sharon they shall see the glory of hawa and the excellency of our creator Strengthen ye the weak hands, strengthen the weak hands, strengthen your weak hands, strengthen your brother and your sister's weak hands. Let's go. And confirm the feeble knees. You know what I'm saying? Suit up. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your creator will come with vengeance, even Hawa with the recompense. He will come and save you. Strengthen your knees, strengthen your hands. It's time to build, it's time to walk, it's time to flow. Your creator will save you. Your creator of your earth will restore your lot and will save you. Copper color race found here in America. Spread throughout the entire plane. I'm talking to all y'all across the plane. What up? Let go, what it do? Jay Stu, how I stew, what it do? If it ain't about Jay Stu, it ain't about shit. You dig on it and get left on, man. Dig on it or get your ass left on. We're talking frequency. We're talking a wave we're surfing. You know what I mean? We're inviting you to be a part of the wave. It don't mean nothing past the fact that we just, you know, are vibing. We feel each other. We know we're rocking in the same shoes, hearing the same sound. That's all we're talking about. Strengthen your weak hands and confirm your weak, feeble knees, so-called Negro. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your Hawa will come with vengeance, even Hawa with a recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be open and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a deer and the tongue of the of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out. All that water underneath you, dog, baby. All that spring, baby, shall leak out. You're gonna get your flow again. Let's go. And streams in the desert, I'll say that again, for the wilderness shall waters break out. How am I gonna eat? <laughs> Where's my water? Waters will break out and streams in the desert and the parched ground shall become a pool a pool the parched dry ground will become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water 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 man when's the last time you had a sip of some pure water when's the last time you took a drink of pure water man 
We went into a pure water stream, just took a drink of that pure water, that mountain water, man, that spring, that all the, got all the minerals, the copper, the gold. We're talking about your water streaming back on your land because you're awake. It goes to sleep when you go to sleep. It wakes up when you wake up. You're connected. Same frequency. Your mother, your father, it's for you. It turned into a desert for them. It's in mourning because they're here. It's in mourning because you've been invaded. You look around, you think a desert is just a desert. It's crying out for you. Why? Because it wants to be restored. Because when it's restored, the parched ground shall become a pool and the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of dragons where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. Like, man, you dig on it, man. Isaiah 35, man. Let's go, man. I can't make this up. I can't make this up. We digging on dragons and dragon lines, energy, frequency, vibration. <laughs> I was talking to How I Stu today. We we're talking about the cons. And, you know, we said, man, pros and cons, pros and cons. See how they flipped you, pros and cons. So you always think of con like a horrible thing because it's a pro and then there's the con. It's the pro, then there's the con, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's flipped. The con is the good. They flipped the con, you know what I'm saying? Man, we're just talking about dragons. <laughs> the con dynasty, man. Love to the fam on Instagram again, man. Um, uh, Kitawa, indigenous Kitawa, or, or Kiwata. You know, I'm sorry, bro. You know, surfing the wave, all the family, man, on Instagram, man, making it happen. Twitter, you know, anything that we're dropping on, we know that technology ain't gonna last forever, but at least we can, you know, try to get the purified substance out of whatever's left of it as we, you know, make our exit, you know what I'm saying, our exodus, man. So we're just, you know, getting the last wave of whatever this internet thing is. We got our own, you know what I'm saying, secluded alcove for you to kick it at 432thedrop.com, be in the vibe suites, and soon you'll be able to kick back and then boom, J Stu's radio will be coming up right out of here. Uno's radio will be coming up right out of there. It's all going to be programmed like any other radio station. It's going to come right out the website. All the Drop Nation that wants to be involved, let me know, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. And all I need is like an MP3 of whatever drop. It could be five minutes, ten minutes, once a week, or, you know, every day. And I'll program it. I'll put it up. And then the people can come and they can hear your radio show. You can have your own sponsor, you know what I'm saying? So when we do it, our show is called The Drop-Off, you know, 432 The Drop Radio. We got The Drop-Off, man, Silas Nehemiah, Ra Ra the Great, Political Mike, All Drop Nation, man. We all going to be surfing the wave. And, you know what I'm saying, we're going to do it like that, man. And, you know, you can sponsor us, you know what I'm saying. You know, we'll, we'll get there, man. First, we got to get it up. But that's just what it is, man. So you can sponsor your, you know what I'm saying, favorite drop artists. You know what I'm saying, Drop Nation, you know what I'm saying. You can sponsor their shows directly. It's going to go directly to them. So that's the way of supporting them. So you want, you want to sponsor Jay Stu's show, you know what I'm saying? You click on that little PayPal, whatever, it goes right to Jay Stu, and it helps him with his radio show. And so that they can really do this, man, you know, hopefully soon on a full-time basis because you're supporting them. You're getting us out of that grid. You're allowing us to be entrepreneurs, to, to drop our drop, you know what I'm saying, full-time so that you get more drop, you know what I'm saying? We're trying to keep dropping full-time and be supported by our community, man, by everybody. Even the hijacks can support us because you're surfing the wave, man, man. I don't like y'all, man, but I'm still going to support it, man. I'll be a sponsor on Uno's show. I'll be a sponsor on Hiram's show, on on, 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 on AD or Isaac's show, you know what I'm saying? Teach Paco, you know what I mean? So we're all trying to build up, you know, our own, our own reality. This is literally being created right before your eyes in real time. All praise to We're speaking through me, speaking through you, speaking together. We're all the same sound. Let's finish it up. And the parched ground shall become a pool and a thirsty land spring of water in the inhabitant in the in the habitation of dragons in the habitation of dragons where each leg shall be grass with reeds and rushes and a highway shall be there and a way so you're looking for a highway you're looking for a way a highway will be there a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. All right, man. I can't make this up. All right. So we're vibrant. 
we're vibing, we're connecting all this with everything we're connecting with out the cliches. They're talking redemption. The Maya is saying they people going to wake back up. All right. Redemption is happening. No white man came and told us that we need to be redeemed. We're redeemed because we are being put in captivity as prisoners of war. By virtue of waking up in your captivity, you want to be redeemed. You say, you know what? This ain't how we rock. I want my mountain. I want my trees. I want my gold. I want my kingdom. I don't just want to just do your thing and help you do your thing. And then I still got to pay you taxes and you still shoot me in the street. My children ain't safe. You know what? I need my mounds. I need my trees. I need my desert to be a pool. I need it to be an oasis. I need it to be pure water again. And the Most High says that there's going to be a way. He's going to make a way, and it's going to be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, or any ravenous beast shall go up therein. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. So it's not about, you know, <laughs> any hijack, man. It's just about being hijack free. It's about being redeemed. You're not redeemed because you, you say you're redeemed. You're redeemed because, you know what I'm saying, you have a, a literal life, a literal habit of being hijack free. You're redeemed because you have a habit of dodging hijacks, man. You have a habit of dodging and choosing up, man, and being in the highest frequency possible. You have a habit of listening to your creator. You have a habit of keeping your law. That's being redeemed. That's the action. And that action, that frequency shall walk there. The redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of Hawa, the ransom. Who can pay a ransom to redeem Israel? Who could pay a who could pay a ransom to redeem the so-called Negro across the plain? Who could pay a ransom but the creator of your trees? Who could ransom you out of this but the creator of your water? For you have power. You have power over the air, the ether, the water, the land. You have power over fire. We just talking dragon lines. <laughs> I said, man, what if every nigger, Negro, Negro <laughs> had his own, you know, fifth dimensional, you know, dragon thing. And again, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we play around with the dragons and, and all that kind of stuff. But in real time, we don't know what a dragon is. All right? We, we just see... You know, stuff on TV and this, and we hear the word dragon again. We, we don't speak English. We never said the word dragon. It's not us making up these images, teaching us what a dragon is. So when we talk dragon, we're just t talking energy, frequency, vibration. We know we have a, a, a higher essence. So in that higher essence, you can call it your dragon body. You can call it your fifth dimension. You can call it your higher octave. You can call it you above the barrier. You can call it hijack free you. Either way, man. You have the ability to control fire. Now you see why fire might begin rain down all over this place. Because you protect dragon lines, you have a dragon fifth dimension situation, and you might be raining fire as a redeemer. Doesn't it say your redeemer is going to come down and start hurling fire? Well, you are your redeemer, and you have a dragon. What if every nigga had a dragon? I'm just trying to say, man. Y'all got to rock with your boy sometime, man. All right. I know I'm crazy. It's all right. I could be crazy. That's, that's cool. That's cool. I could be crazy. But what if we had personal dragons, man? If every nigga had a dragon, I'm just saying, and the dragons only rock with you when you was choosing up, that would be better than having any other, you know, weapon. Or, you know, you have a dragon, man. <laughs> Imagine. All right, I'm just saying. Imagine if every nigga had a dragon. You might need to start choosing up, getting back control of your energy, your frequency and vibration. There's a reason why Peru is referred to as the dragon's lair or the vortex or the navel. We're talking energy, frequency, and vibration, man. Let's get this last paragraph. No lion shall be there or any ravenous beast shall go up therein. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there and the ransom of Hawa shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy. And 
every ransom of Hawa, every person that Hawa has woken up, every person that Hawa has redeemed to see, to be hijacked free, you know, at least to start walking in those shoes of being hijacked free, every ransom of Hawa shall return. Return to what? Your mountains, your trees, Zion and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. You, my people, copper color races found in America shall obtain joy and gladness, man. You will obtain your gladness. You will obtain your peace, your shalom. You will devour chaos and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. All sadness, all grief shall flee away, man. So that was a little reading of Isaiah 35 and Jubilees 9 to 10. Peace and power, man, for, for just rocking with yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? For keeping yourself up because the more powered up you are, the more powered up I am. I feel like I'm getting stronger every day because you're waking up. The more you wake up, the more I wake up. You know what I'm saying? The more, the more energy I get. So we, we are a hive. We, we do function together. It's only an illusion that we function separately, but the more conscious we consciousness we build, the easier it is for our brothers and sisters to see, to break free from anything that's being put on them. And they can go rock back to their indigenous. They can rock back and stop spinning on the ball. They can know the creator exists. And then they can now be in the frequency, man, and start getting the drop. I love y'all, man. Keep dropping that drop. Keep dropping in our Google Drive. Keep rocking that drop tuner because we're trying to get everybody's music Everybody's, you know, music libraries tuned to 432. So you can always be above the barrier, man. Keep rocking hijack free, man. Much a hive to the tribe, man. I love y'all so much, man. I can't even tell y'all, man. Every day, I, you know, it's like I have a great powwow with somebody. And it's just, you know, brightens, you know what I'm saying, up every element, man, that, uh, that I need, man. So I, I'm getting fed. I'm getting the elements because of you. And I love the tribe. I love the home team. Hawa, hawa, stay up. Suit up, suit up, tribe up, vibe up, do all that, man. Keep on, you know what I'm saying? Keep challenging yourselves, man. Keep challenging yourselves, man. Don't get, we all have a tendency to, uh, you know, get one place and get one thing, and, and then now you keep challenging yourself. If you got it, you got it, man, and you got it. You got the ability to have a clear thought. You got the ability to have a thesis, an hypothesis. You have the ability to put stuff together that no one can put together, see what someone else can't see. We're about to get back in that paleo. Hire and take the wheel. We're about to get back in that paleo so that we can start seeing what we see. Not their interpretations, not their translations. Our own picto, our own paleo, so we can put it together, man. Hawa, hawa to the home team. I'll see y'all, man. Power up.